Hi, and welcome to Just Paint It. I'm Christina Watts, a Prince George multimedia artist, and today I get to show you a mixed media encaustics. So we're going to be using some paint uh, that's in wax form today. A lot of people have been interested in the hot wax lately, and I thought I would do a nice little mixed media number to show you how it's done. So the surface you want to start with is a gessoed board, or you can get gesso that's specific for encaustics, and put it on a wood panel board. Um, you don't want to use canvas because it'll just um, buckle and crack with the weight of the wax on later. And then we have a few things. I'm going to embed an image. This one I took of Prince George downtown that I've warped a little bit in um, one of my apps and I thought it would be fun because we're going to kind of make it the land of opportunity downtown today. And um, in that spirit of that I went downtown and I found a few things kicking around like little bits of gravel and um, some pennies and just a few little trinkets I thought would be fun to uh, put in this piece and show you how easy it is to embed in the beeswax. So encaustic is made up of um, a part beeswax and part Dharma, Dharma resin and Dharma resin is actually made from a tree so this is like a very good kind of clean project to do. There's a lot of good things in it and when you're cooking it on your grill beside you um, it smells really nice, it smells like beeswax, it smells like honey, and it just kind of makes this whole process really fun. And take your time with it. So what I've done on the side in a grill is in these tins from some salmon or tuna, I've taken some of the pellets from the beeswax armor, put them in the tin, and just melted them down. Um, you just want to melt them so that they're liquid, and then uh, you don't want them to smoke at all. So when it's melted, just turn your grill down a little bit because all you're doing at this point is keeping it nice and, and warm and, and melted. So what you want to do first is you want to fuse your layers and that's done with a heat gun. You want to heat the first layer, you want to add your beeswax to it and then you want to put your embed your in stuff and then you want to heat it again to fuse it. So let's get going. Now the beeswax will instantly want to get cool, so um, it dries fast because it cools fast. And the longer you heat your board and the surface underneath is warm, the more time you've got to spread your beeswax. And that is our base layer. Uh, and to fuse it together, again, you go back and forth, heat gun, layer, heat gun, layer. And when you've got your heat gun on here, you just want it to move that wax around so it's nice and flat. Okay, so now I'm going to add my image of Prince George. So we're going to kind of look to see whereabouts I'm going to end up with the top half and I'm trying to keep that rule of thirds in mind so I think if we've got buildings here we've got the sky here we're gonna have a good portion from the ground which will be perfect for adding our other elements we will just rub it and brandish it in so brandishing is another thing that you'll do with encaustics and it's just really rubbing the image into a warmed wax surface um, because as you're rubbing, you're of course creating friction, which is heating it up again and adhering it to the board below. Encaustics is a really cool process because it's layer by layer and um, it's just got so much texture. And it's just a really interesting way to paint. And a lot of times what you can do too is with these sticks is you can have multiple cans of paint going on. You just melt the beeswax and you add these into there to um, make different pigments of paint. So you're actually going to begin to paint with it. So that's adhered and I'm going to add some beeswax on top of my image to preserve it. I love going downtown. They've got so many cool shops and stuff. And I really think that, you know, the downtown is a nice, becoming a really nice core. And there's 
so many different things going on. Um, all the little shops with their unique things that, you know, when you go places and you want to see what the culture is like, you go downtown, you go into those places. And I like the idea of while well, you're in there, you know, these are local store owners who carefully selected and placed the products close to us in a really interesting way. Um, the niche, we've got the new coffee shop by the courthouse. I think they call it ritual, which is really appropriate for a coffee shop because coffee is kind of a ritual. Now that I've got that layer in, again, I'm going to hit it with the heat gun and fuse it in. So layer, fuse, layer, fuse. We'll give that a second to dry. And I'm gonna start thinking about where I'm gonna put these next little pieces of paper. So these are just um, from sewing patterns and they actually, when they go into this, are going to start looking really transparent. So this one here is actually a tea bag and I um, like to kind of open them up and dry them out. Sometimes I'll do watercolor paints on them. In this case though, so I have added a key, uh, which was actually just a stamp. So um, for those of you out there that, you know, are a little intimidated by painting, this is a good way to start because the collaging and mixed media starts to help develop your eye for things. And you just sort of move it around as you see fit. Now I know that this is going to dry transparent um, and blend right in because it's so thin. So I'm just being careful about where to put it here. Yeah, so right there looks good. And um, I've got just another regular chi bag that's super fun. I think I'll just uh, stick this one down in amongst these guys. Just as a little snippet over. Okay, grab my brush, and brandish it in, and then I'll add my beeswax over the top of that and hit it with a fuse again by using the heat gun. Uh, one of the things that you want to be careful about with your brushes on encaustics is that your brush is a natural fiber or hog bristle brush because um, if you use a synthetic brush, your brush will just start melting on you when you're uh, in this hot, hot beeswax. So be cognizant if your brush bristles are curling up, like it's likely that you have a synthetic brush. Um, and you'll know, you'll start to feel brushes and you'll know which ones feel more like a hair brush and which ones feel like plastic. What I do is I have two pots of beeswax going just because I'm trying to melt it fast. And um, I'm watching to make sure that, you know, if, if it's melting good, if it's melting really fast, I will turn it down. And if it's um, hardening, like it's starting to harden now because I've turned it down, I'll turn it back up. So it's a bit of babysitting with this. Um, you're cooking and you're painting. So it's interesting. starting to pick up and build really interesting layers. So I'm going to start using my, my paint sticks. Um, these are an oil paint in a stick form and they have just enough wax in them to be formed into a stick. So ultimately now you're painting with oils. I like these because you're not using a brush. This is not a traditional way of painting but um, what I like to do is to rub it around and it just sort of gives it an interesting blended look. And you can fix and adjust these as much as you want as you go. One time I was um, doing some encaustic painting at home and I have a really nice flat glass stove and I thought it might be easy to just heat my tins up and do my encaustic painting right in my kitchen. And everything was going gloriously well. Um, and my painting was working out good. And then my husband came home early. And that was the end of my ability to paint in the kitchen at home. Now we've got, um, this is like a pale yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit of um, this blue. 
And if it's kind of not working that good, just because it's maybe been sitting a while, you just go through and it kind of builds a layer. So just peel that layer off your stick and then continue on with it. Nice teal turquoise in there. And then we'll add some indigo and then I'll push it around with my fingers and it'll be nice. Now don't worry too much. It looks like it mayhem right now, but with all paintings, they go through a really nasty phase and then they get pulled out of the hat. I'm trying to kind of keep the image in here too. So I'm just being a little bit careful not to put my pigment sticks there, but um, I may run it up the sides and vignette it. And as you can see, it's starting to build up some really interesting textures already, which I'll use to my advantage in a little bit when I start putting in my other pieces. So make sure you wear gloves for this job because now it's up to your fingers. Now people say, how do you fuse this paint into it? You do the same process that you do when you added the beeswax. You hit it with your heat gun and it's going to move around a bit. So just know that, you know, that might not be how it looks when you lay it down with your fingers because if you're heating beeswax, it's going to move. And likewise, when you want to lift some too. So I'll go through, I might hit some spots in here and then I'll go ahead and grab a paper towel and lift some of it off. So part of what I'm doing now is pushing some of these oil paints right into the crevices of the beeswax. And that's important when you're trying to add more depth to your piece and it's not just, you know, a straight up um, image transfer. You're trying to kind of start manipulating it and start adding to the picture. Um, that becomes a process of mixed media painting because you never want it to look like any image that maybe you started out with before. You want it to kind of become its own piece. So, and a lot of people I know you're out there just love, 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 love mixed media paintings because they're just full of texture and they're just really fun. As I go, I'm thinking about, you know, where do my colors need to change? What needs to be done differently? Um, do I need to darken an edge? Do I need to soften an edge? Uh, do I like it with the white in there? Do I want to cover that up? And how will it look like when it's fused? So let's give it a shot with the gun. So this is where we've gotten with our layer so far. Um, we've done the photo layer, the beeswax layers. We've started to build up the paint and add some more different papers in there that are interesting. And now I'm going to actually put in some, some graphite powder. So graphite powder is a really nice addition to an acoustic painting because it sticks to anything that's like uh, sticky, a little bit sticky. And uh, wax as it dries is a little bit sticky until it completely hardens. So a lot of people will use a brush with this part. Um, I tend to use my fingers just because I don't want powder everywhere. Um, and I just kind of want to grunge up the sides and add just sort of a vignette to our image. And when I hit this with the fuse dry uh, heat gun, um, what's going to happen is it will move some of this graphite powder around. And it, it looks really interesting when it does that. So again, it's all extra layers, building some layers. I'm trying to keep this sort of bright in here because um, you have to have some lights in your paintings to really sort of make them pop. But I do kind of want this to sort of be this grungy look around it. And that's what I'm shooting for in this piece because I am going to be adding um, a few little things that I found off the street in here. So it sort of makes sense to this piece. And then I'll give it just a little bit of a towel off. And I'm taking any extra away and flipping my paper towel over so that I don't add some of that dark powder where I don't need it. Now you can add mica powders to this. Um, you can add lots of different powders. Um, one thing, just be careful if it's a water soluble powder, is it will actually disappear in your encaustics and you won't actually get any color out of it. So all the stuff that you use needs to be um, relatively pigment loaded and meant for like an oil painting. Okay, so we're going to add um, some more pieces up here. I see that I've got a really good paper piece showing right there and I want to hide that. You can hide that by continually building up more layers. I'm going to cheat today and add just some more paper to that top part. This is, of course, the sewing paper. It's really, really thin. 
and um, I'm careful where to point my lines. So if you have lines pointing this way, that kind of tells a person's eye, hey, look down here, and then kind of go around there. So um, when I'm using pieces like this, I'm thinking about those things, creating some direction with the person's eye. Brandish that in. Paint over top with my beeswax. And I think what I'll do in this case is I'll add some more of that pigment, that white pigment to kind of cover those guys up a bit too. So nothing is necessarily permanent. You can always fuse a layer over top of what you have. So if you don't like it, just play and move stuff around. That's kind of the beauty of this project. Now we're going to start embedding a few pieces. So um, I have some pennies and some gravel because I thought downtown and Prince George, we really have a lot of opportunity here. And so I thought this piece would sort of speak to that. And I think it's interesting to sort of have these little added embellishments in your piece if you can get them to look aesthetically pleasing and not look like um, random bits were just sort of thrown there without a purpose. They need to have a purpose in a piece. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to start sort of build a pattern up into here so the eyes can kind of follow that and I'm just sort of thinking you know where might they lie that that looks good um, how close can I get them to an edge and if I had smaller ones I would put them up here so that it looked like it was you know going off in the distance um, but they're only one size so I will just need to do what I can with them so there, and now I have a little bit of gravel, stones and stuff that I found actually in the parking lot um, downtown. And so I'm gonna add some of those in. I really like them, they're really kind of fun. Try to get the flat ones though. It'll be a little bit easier to manage and you won't have to embed them as hard as uh, you would if you had like some really thick pieces, unless of course you do want them to stick up. And in some case I do want them to stick up. get my brush warmed up because if your brush goes on the side and it hardens then you have to stick it back in and keep it warmed up and I'm thinking about the sky and uh, I still am trying to push it a little bit more into the white zone here so this kind of can be really tricky because um, as you can see that wax came right off my brush there so I'll just have to make sure when I'm heating it that I heat it really hard right there so that that wax melts and melts into the rest of the painting. And sometimes it will want to come up and that's okay. Just stick them back down. So this is a fun and really, really messy project. Okay, I'm gonna actually heat these guys and melt these down and then make my way around. So I'm finding that this is working out better if I heat these down and then put a layer on top. So um, just something to keep in mind. Sometimes your stuff sticks down and you're okay to just put the wax on top. And sometimes you want to kind of like go between heating it with the heat gun to make it stick and brushing the wax over top. You learn something every time you do a painting. And one of the fun things with these pieces is um, to keep them sparkly and clean, you don't wipe them off with anything general. You actually just use ladies' pantyhose to pol polish them up. So um, ladies, any of those pantyhose that get runs in them, save them. Because if you're doing encaustics, you're going to need to use them as a polishing cloth. And that will ensure that your piece stays really nice and glossy for a long, long time. They're actually finding too that um, in Egypt there's encaustic pieces that they're finding that have survived through the years. So, you know, this is a really long term medium. You do not want to stick it in direct sunlight or any place it's going to get really, really hot because it is a wax and it will melt. Um, but, you know, you think about your candles in your house and where you keep those and what you do with, you know, general candles. So, I'll try that and fuse these down, see what they look like. I got one final seal coat over my images. 
And I'm gonna take another look at this piece, but it's pretty close to being finished. And there's one other thing I can show you today, and that is to graffito into it, and that's actually how we're gonna sign off today as well. So let's graffito a bit first before I sign off, and then we'll do that one last. Graffito is simply when you're taking a sharp object and you're running it through your painting. So I'm thinking about where do I want some extra interest in my piece? Um, the sky's already got quite a bit going on. Um, we're trying to save these images here, so I actually, I think I might wanna go around these buildings and outline them which will kind of give, and then fill them in with some graphite powder or some oil pigment. So I'm carving just with a nail. And I think over across the Wittick building. Wittick building is really interesting. They got some great stuff inside. And um, they've got the second one almost uh, complete. Looks like it's in lockdown phase. So that'll be fun when they get them both done. And now I will run a little bit of powder this guy down here and look at the pigment so one of the things that's really nice with the oil pigments is it will sink down into these crevices and so it'll help you give them an outline and then you can wipe it away which is awesome so it gives you that sort of distressed look in there and you'll notice i've been painting this image upside down the whole time um, sometimes that's a really good way to paint because then what you're doing is you're just blocking in shapes and you're not really paying attention or worrying about you know, the other things that are going on in the painting. So don't be afraid to um, turn your stuff upside down and look at it from a different way. It helps. Another way you could do this is with alcohol inks. So you kind of build a crevice and then you would put the drops of ink or the alcohol inks into the crevice and they will follow that line through your painting for you. And we will fuse that. Right, we'll let that cool. I'm gonna think about where to sign it. Um, with this piece here, um, because we're gonna polish it up with, with her stocking, um, I'm thinking about where to sign it, which I think is gonna be best down over here in the corner. So, or along the side, the side actually might be interesting too. I think maybe I'll try that today. So if you're not too sure where to sign your pieces, and a lot of people aren't, um, Things, areas that are good to sign are like the stem of your flower or interesting pieces along um, a tree bark. Uh, just make your signature interesting because uh, that's part of having your piece, right? You don't have to put it down on your corner. And this one's going to be interesting. This is going to be fun because my name's going to be messy with this beeswax. So I scratched my name into the side. I'm going to add some pigment and rub it in. It's sort of a hidden signature on this one. I like it. It's fun. And as it hards, I'm going to start to use my thing to shine it up. Okay, we've taken this mixed media encaustic piece layer by layer, and I hope you got some really great ideas out of this because I've shown you how to add papers and photos and add, you know, hard elements like rocks and pennies and just sort of get some visual elements going on here um, we've got a really nice dark building set with some lights going through it all the way down so your eye will sort of catch it and as this sits over time it's going to look um, shinier and gleamer and you're going to be able to polish it up so that you can really see down to the depths of this piece and you'll see layer after layer in it and you'll enjoy it for many years to come so I'm going to call this one finished. I've signed it in the corner by scratching my name in and it's a little bit different than normal but it's really fun and I hope you enjoy this one. Thanks for watching and have an artful day.